Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan. Oh, I'm excited. My son has an incredible tutorial for you. So much information. It's all about machining titanium on a huge level. Surface foot, chip load, just all the specs, all the tooling. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. But before he starts, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Make sure that you come back because we got more information, more tutorials coming on a daily basis. And go ahead and put your comments because we will read the comments and respond to you, all right? So here it is, my son Tyson, machining the titanium king. Boom. Hey everyone, this is Tyson. I'm in front of my new NLX 2500 and in this video, I'm gonna run my very first part. So you know we like to do things big here. In my machine, I've got a big three inch diameter 6AL4V titanium bar. And we're gonna use that to make a giant titanium king. Some of you have already seen our titanium chest set, and it's gonna be that same king. Except it's not gonna be this small. We're gonna be making a titan sized one. This is the DMG Mori NLX2500. This is a dual spindle lathe with live tooling that can go up to 10,000 RPM. This machine has an intuitive touchscreen control and is capable of making anything I think of. So I'm gonna walk you through all 10 Kenna Metal tools. We're gonna to go over speeds and feeds, what they do, and how to program them, and let's get going. This part's no joke. We made it out of three inch diameter 6AL4V. It's eight inches long. Operations on it are pretty similar to something you'd see in aerospace parts. So on this screen, I've got Fusion open. And it's got my program. We're gonna go over all of our tools on it. And then on this screen, I've got Novo opened and it's got all of my tools listed here. We're gonna take all of these tools and put it into a PDF, which is gonna be under related files next to this video in the Academy. That's also where you can find the setup sheet. We have 10 tools, which are a combination of static and driven tooling from Kenna Metal. Everything is done in one operation and parted off complete. So for the setup, I'm holding this part in a three inch collet, the Royal Quick Grip Collet Chuck. So the most important thing is making sure you stick the part out far enough to where your live tools in the back here will have enough room to clear. All right, let's start off with tool one. So the first tool we're gonna to use is going to be a DNMG OD rougher with a 32 thousandths radius. It's gonna face the part and then it's gonna turn as much of the OD as it can on every surface here. I'm gonna go 150 SFM with a feed rate of 6 thousandths inches per revolution. And we're gonna go with a 60 thousandths step to cut on all the OD roughing. We're gonna start off with a facing operation on the front. We're gonna leave 4 thousandths. And then we're gonna use that same tool to rough out as much of the OD as we can with a 60 thousandths depth. So it's gonna go down as much as it can with that angle that that tool has and rough out all the surfaces. We're leaving four thousandths for Walt. After everything is roughed out, we're gonna take our next tool, which is a 125 thousandths wide OD groover. And we're gonna groove out this front section right here. It's going to come down and groove with little step overs. We're gonna go with 150 thousandths step downs. And it's gonna start with this section here. We're gonna finish it and then we're gonna groove this groove over here. So for both of these grooves, I went with 330 SFM, and we went with the feed rate of two and a half thousandths per revolution. I used that for both roughing these grooves and to finish this first groove. For the second one, I dropped my SFM a little bit because it wanted to chatter, so that put a little bit more pressure on it. The third tool we used was a 157 wide full radius Oni groover. On the first tool, because of the angle of it, we couldn't rough out most of the section right here. So we're using this tool to finish up the roughing from the first tool. And then it's gonna finish all of this shaft right here. And it's gonna stop on this corner so the next finish tool will blend nicely. Just like the last tool, I'm gonna use a partial step down of 150 thousandths. I'm not gonna go all the way down just because it's sticking out quite a bit and I don't wanna put too much pressure on the part. For speeds and feeds, I'm gonna go 250 SFM with a feed rate of 5 thousandths per revolution. And I'm gonna use that for both roughing and finishing. So we're done roughing, 
And we finished some of these grooves over here and we finished the shaft. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run an OD finish pass. So the fourth tool we're using is a VPGR insert. It's gonna face the part. It's gonna come across these ODs over here. It's gonna skip this section right here, which was touched by that first groover. And it's gonna to touch these two diameters right here. Then we're gonna skip this section over here, which was touched by that full radius groover. We're just gonna come down and turn across this OD over here, come down into this little V groove and come out the other side right here. For the finish tool speed and feed, we're gonna go with 200 SFM and a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. And then we have most of our OD lathe work done. Now that we've done all the OD work on this side of the part, our fifth tool is going to be a 202 thousandths wide face grouper. So you can see the inside of this part right here, it's no joke, it's pretty deep. We have to use a face grouper to get in there and I'll start from the bottom and kind of work my way up with that face grouper. I've got to be careful because of this cross that's in the way right here. So we can't turn down all the way into here. We kind of have to start from the bottom where that cross starts and just work our way up. For our speeds and feeds, I went with 475 SFM. It seems a little bit high, but it worked really well with the feed rate and the depth that I used. So we're using a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. And I'm doing a partial step down of 40 thousandths. So it's not going too deep at a time, but the SFM is pretty high, so you're not losing much time. So tool number six is actually pretty tricky. Tools number four and five couldn't quite reach down into this area and rough out this section right here. So we need a tool that can fit inside of this face groover just a hair and has enough angle that it will fit right in this section right here without interfering with the cross. So the tool I chose was a boring bar with a VBGT insert that was kicked out just a hair so it could reach inside of this groove. I flipped it upside down so I can use it as an OD tool but because it's flipped upside down, I have to spin the spindle in the opposite direction so it can cut properly. I also have to be very careful about how I program it so that it doesn't go too deep into this groove. So I start the path right about where the tool finished and I end it just a little bit off of this radius right here. So I gave it about a 625 thousandths inner radius diameter. You do have to be very careful that you don't go too deep and you shank out on this cross over here. So I stayed off of it just a hair. Speed and feeds I used were 200 SFM, a feed rate of 2 thousandths per revolution, and I did a depth of cut of 10 thousandths. It's not very big, but we're not roughing too much and I wanted to be careful because of the tool I'm using. So tool number seven is the start of our live tooling. I'm gonna to take a half inch Harvey 2 end mill with five flutes, and we're gonna start roughing and finishing each of these sections on the cross. So I take it one at a time. I'm gonna start off by choosing one of these two sections at the top here to rough. We're gonna go full depth with the end mill. We're just gonna do 20 thousandths passes with an SFM of 300 and a feed rate of 3 thousandths per tooth. We're gonna to start by roughing out this top section right here. We're gonna do 20 thousandths passes. I'm gonna rough it out and then we're gonna finish it and then I'm gonna take that pass and I'm gonna duplicate it on this end right here. For the back portion of the cross, I can't use the 2D adaptive pass because there's not enough room without hitting the top of the crown. So I did a 2D contour to groove out the back of the cross. I'm using 30,000 step downs and because it's grooving, I slowed down my speeds and feeds. So now I'm doing 200 SFM with a feed rate of 2 thousandths per tooth. After all four of these sections are done, I flip it one more time, and now we're gonna do a face pass along the face of the cross here. I'm gonna rough it out in two passes, 250 SFM, feed rate of 1 thousandths per tooth. And then I'm gonna duplicate it one more time, and we're gonna do it on the back end also. On all of these roughing passes on the cross, I left 3 thousandths per wall, and I slowed down the RPMs on the finish pass. So on the finish pass for all of these sections, we kissed it using 500 RPM with a feed rate of one and a half thousandths per tooth. Just nice and slow to give it that finish. So now that the cross is done, tool number eight is gonna take care of roughing and finishing out the thorns here. We're gonna take a Harvey 3 end mill, 
We're going to do a 2D adaptive pass that's going to come down and rough out each of these guys here, doing a 20,000 step to cut. This is going to go one by one, boom, boom, boom. So just like the last end mill, we went with a 20,000 step to cut, and we went with 300 SFM with a feed rate of 2,000s per tooth. I slowed it down on the finish pass, going with 100 SFM and a feed rate of 1,500s per tooth. So we're done with this half of the king now. We just need to take care of these grooves over here. So tool number nine is going to be a 5 8 Harvey 1 ball mill. The pass was a little bit tricky to make. So if you look at our print, we have these dimensions that we use to make those grooves. What I did was a trace pass along the bottom curve here. So I actually drew this. I cut off the top section and I just used the bottom curve coming up and along the top curve. And I used that as my trace pass. I did five passes, 40 thousands deep, and I just went bottom up, one, two, three, four, five. So for the end mill, I originally wanted to go with the Harvey 3, which is a beast of an end mill. But I ended up going with the Harvey 1 because it had four flutes, and it does a little bit better at center cutting at the tip. For speeds and feeds, I went with 200 SFM and a feed rate of 7 thousandths per tooth. For the roughing, because it wanted to chatter, I went aggressive with 7 thousandths per tooth. For the finish pass, I slowed it down to 450 RPM with a feed rate of one and a half thousandths per tooth. On the finish pass, I wanted to use climb cutting to minimize chatter. So I actually duplicated that trace pass I made earlier, and I moved it two and a half thousandths one way, and then I duplicated it one more time and moved it two and a half thousandths the other way. So I could come down with one pass going down two and a half thousandths to one side, and then going up two and a half thousandths with the other pass. And then all of those roughing and finishing passes, I made a pattern on each one so I didn't have to repeat myself. I just did one, two, three, and just went all the way around with the rough pass, and then same thing with the finish pass. So now the whole part is done. We just needed to part it off. So tool number 10 is gonna be our 118 thousandths part off tool. We just go straight down, 200 SFM, we limit the RPM to 1,000 so the part doesn't go flying. And we do a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution. This part's pretty big and heavy, so it's a little bit sketchy trying to use the part catcher to get this thing. But it was just the right size. It's almost like it was made to be. So there you go. You know how to machine this part now. We did some crazy live tooling. You can use that on pretty much any part now. Like I said earlier, the operations in this part you can use on aerospace parts. So thanks for watching. Make sure you check out some of my other lathe videos and I'll see you next time.